Hey everybody, Captain Beanard here with your BHDL3 Week 6 Recap and Week 7 Preview. So, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this by taking a closer look at our opponent for this week. And that, of course, was the Down Under Crocodiles, coached by Rolder. So this was actually our second match with Rolder here on Scarlet and Violet. The first one was all the way back in the BHDL1, actually. And he is a good competitive battler in his own right. On the screen here, you will see a snapshot of his team this season, top to bottom. So uh, looking at this roster, the Pokemon I was expecting him to 100% bring to this game would have been the Iron Boulder. Hippowdon, Landorus, Skarmory, and Rabombi. So I was actually expecting to see all of those Pokemon, all five, uh, guaranteed in this match. Um, so as for the sixth slot here, I was kind of expecting to see either the Raging Bolt, the Sableye, or the Tatsugiri in that spot. Um, and then, of course, the Pokemon that uh, he has that I was not at all expecting to see in this game would be the Probopass and the Ludiculo, specifically because they just didn't seem to have a very good matchup into my team. So, um, yeah, having said that, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to the team preview screen to take a look at what he actually ended up bringing. So here you can see the six Pokemon that he brought to the battle on the right-hand side of the screen, the six Pokemon I brought on the left. And so as you can see, he did bring the Skarmory, Hippowdon, Raging Bolt, Tatsugiri, Iron Boulder, and Rabombi. So pretty much exactly everything that I was expecting. The one big surprise was uh, no Landorus Incarnate. So... Um, yeah, I was still pretty shocked that he did not bring that to this game, um, but other than that, everything was pretty much as expected. Now, as you can see, this is kind of a uh, little bit of a sand team of sorts here, so um, a little bit more on the easy side to uh, predict what he might bring each week, um, but like I said, even not having the Landorus was uh, definitely a surprise. Now, um, looking at the Pokemon I brought this week, we have the Scissor, Rotom Wash, Gudra, Alolan Ninetales, Mudsdale, and of course the Sneasler. So um, once again, these were just the Pokemon that I thought had the best matchup into his team. Um, obviously the Ninetales was really important this week to try and counteract his weather with our own, um, but other than that, nothing uh, crazy, nothing um, super different to, uh, to call out here. Um, but yeah, having said that, we're going to go ahead and keep on moving by taking a look at what actually happened in the match. So, um, for those of you who watched the game already, this will be no surprise, which again, I assume is probably everybody. Um, but we did end up winning this game 3-0. It was a, a pretty solid battle top to bottom, honestly. Um, we didn't seem like we were in too good a shape in the early goings of this game, but um, we were able to turn around and uh, kind of start the ball rolling, and then um, we're able to go ahead and uh, take the win at the end, obviously. Um, and of course, since we did win, I'm going to go ahead and name the game MVP this week. And so after a lot of thought, because um, I'll be honest with you guys, I think this week was probably the most difficult week to date for me to name a game MVP, specifically because I feel like every member of the team really did its job and uh if not for them playing their role, we could have had a different outcome this week for sure. Um, but I will have to go ahead and give the game MVP to Gudra this week, specifically because Gudra did get two KOs, uh, which was tied with one other Pokemon, uh, that being the Sneasler, and um, it did not get knocked out itself. Um, but additionally, Gudra was really good for positioning in this game. Um, it was really good for uh, chip damage on a couple of other Pokemon that it didn't get the knockout on. So I feel like overall Gudra did put in just a little bit more work um, than some of the other members of the team. However, like I said, I think this was really a textbook example. This game was of every Pokemon really playing its role this week. Um, and so I was pretty happy about that. But um, yeah, game MVP, I would say, has to be Gudra once again. So... Um, having said that, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to our weekly takeaways from this game. 
And so um, my takeaways from this game will be, um, number one, I thought this was an even match on paper. So um, looking at my opponent's roster top to bottom, looking at my roster top to bottom, I would say I feel like they matched up pretty evenly on paper. We both had our um, premier high point value threats. We both have our um, walls, that kind of thing. Um, like I said, his team, I think a little more on the predictable side, but still very, very solid through and through. Um, I felt like some of his high point value threats actually matched up pretty well against mine. So like the, um, the iron boulder, the, um, Landorus incarnate, I felt like matched up pretty well against a lot of my high point value threats. Um, but at the same time, I feel like some of my, uh, more lower tier mons matched up pretty well against, uh, his high point value threats, such as the Mudsdale specifically had a really good time this week. Um, but yeah, all in all, I thought it was pretty even. Um, next thing I would note is I would say I prepped okay for this game, but I did feel like I played it pretty well. So, um, what I mean by that is when I look at my prep for this week, um, I didn't really think my prep was anything spectacular. I mean, there was obvious stuff, like I said, bringing the Alolan Ninetales to make sure the, uh, sand would stay off the board, um, so he couldn't benefit from that with any of his Pokemon. Um, the set on the Ninetales was a little bit uh, more on the unique side because I opted for max speed investment, which would have allowed me to outspeed a max speed Thunderous Incarnate, although, as I stated, he didn't bring it, so that kind of ended up backfiring on me a little bit because uh, Ninetales then didn't have the firepower behind it to uh, get a knockout on the Hippowdon early game, which kind of put me on the back foot uh, early in the game. But um, other than that, everything was pretty standard. I don't think I really brought anything super crazy or thoughtful to uh to counteract my opponent which is why i um put that i just play or i just prepped okay for this um and honestly that wasn't for a lack of thought because i did put thought in it was just that i couldn't really think of anything that was like super creative or niche that could take my opponent on because my opponent had a pretty um solid uh pseudo sand team on deck so um yeah, I didn't think of anything uh, really crazy. So, again, I thought the prep was okay, um, <clears throat> but nothing special. Now, on the flip side of that, I will say I did feel like I played this game pretty well aside from one specific moment. And uh, that specific moment would have to be when uh, the turn that I actually timed out. So, um, there was a turn where I had my Gudra in against my opponent's Rabombi, and... Um, I really couldn't decide what I wanted to do. I was uh, contemplating either attacking or switching. And so I actually, in my mind, I decided that I wanted to switch, but I actually didn't click the button fast enough. So it ended up staying in and auto-selecting um, my first attack on the list, which was Draco Meteor. And so that blunder actually ended up working out in my favor because my opponent actually ended up switching into the Iron Boulder. So I ended up getting some pretty notable chip damage on the Iron Boulder with the Gudra, even though I was sitting at minus two uh, special attack at the time. Um, but yeah, that was something that uh, was a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal at the time. Now, um, I will say that my original plan, had I been able to click the button fast enough, was uh, to switch into Mudsdale. So that pretty much would have had the same end result, except for actually a little bit worse for me, because I wouldn't have got that chip on the Iron Boulder. Now, in the end game, uh, it turns out that that didn't look like it would have mattered at all anyway, um, but still at the time, that was a pretty big thing. However, um, I will say that I feel like the rest of the plays that I made in the game did kind of overshadow that to the point that I'm comfortable saying I think I played pretty well. Um, one key moment in the match was uh, when I had the Mudsdale in against my opponent's Skarmory, and uh, I decided to make an extremely risky prediction and predict that he would roost to try and heal the Skarmory, and I end up going for the Earthquake. So um, obviously, had he not gone for the Roost, that would have been catastrophic because it wouldn't have uh, touched the Skarmory with the Earthquake. However, he does go for the Roost, which means Skarmory loses its flying type for that turn. And so I hit him with super effective damage with the Earthquake, putting him actually down below where he was uh, before he Roosted. So um, that was a pretty uh, risky play that I made that paid off big because that made him uh, concerned to try and Roost the damage off with the Skarmory. Um, later on in the match, and so um, that ended up leading to the Skarmory not having nearly as much longevity in the game as it otherwise would have, so um, I was extremely happy about that. 
Um, also, kind of the way that I played uh, early game with the Nine Tails to keep the sand off the field, and uh, ended up getting rid of the opponent's Hippowdon early with the uh, Gudra was another thing that I thought was good. Um, the Terra Fairy on the Gudra specifically, I thought was pretty good, obviously, to counter his uh, heavy hitting dragon types, such as the um, Raging Bolt and the Tatsugiri, which was one of his Terra Captains this week. Um, and then also, uh, toward the end of the match, being able to uh, choice, uh, or I should say trick, a choice specs onto the Raging Bolt with the Rotom, while on the surface may not have seemed like the best play at the time. Um, it was an insurance policy because uh, in the end game, uh, having that Raging Bolt not be able to switch its moves was actually actually very, very helpful, um, as I did have both the Electric Immunity in the Mudsdale remaining and the uh, Fairy Immunity in the Terra Fairy Gudra remaining. So that pretty much ensured our victory that late in the game to make sure that the uh, Raging Bolt couldn't switch moves. Um, so it ended up having to choice lock into Weather Ball, of all things, uh, with no weather condition actually on the field. So, um, so yeah, other than that timeout turn, I feel like I played this game pretty well, so um, I'm comfortable saying that, and uh, I think that did show in the uh, results. Um, but yeah, um, the next thing I would note here is I would say there were even and minimal hacks in this game, so there really weren't much of any hacks in this game. I think I might have got like a crit, and he might have got like a status condition activation somewhere, but... Um, all in all, there were not many hacks on this game, and I would say the hacks that did happen didn't really swing the game one way or the other in any way. Um, but yeah, and um, last thing I would note, and uh, this is the big one here with this game, is that with this victory, um, though it was a very hard-fought game, very competitive game, very happy to uh, come away with the win in this one, um, with this victory, the Pidgeys advanced to an unprecedented 6-0 and record here in the BHDL3, um, and with that, that 100% guarantees us a spot in the BHDL3 playoffs. So um, I'm really pumped up about that, because as you guys will note, if you think back to where we were at this point um, last season in the BHDL, we were pretty much in almost the exact opposite situation that we are now, and so I am just uh, very happy and feel very fortunate to be able to be in this spot um, right now, being one of the first teams to lock in a playoff spot here in the BHDL 3. Um, however, our work is not over yet. We still have uh, much more league to play. And um, as I said uh, many times before, we're hoping to just uh, continue to do the work to um, maintain the uh, status that we've worked for here um, thus far. But um, like I said, that does feed us into our week seven uh, matchup here. And that is going to be against the Leaf Agents coached by Scorpion. Now, we are no strangers to Scorpion, certainly. Um, he is the new owner of the BHDL as of Season 3, so we uh, work pretty closely with him as uh, I am part of the commissioner's team. And, um, of course, we have had uh, two matches prior here on Scarlet and Violet, one free game and one league game back in the BHDL 1. And um, so, yeah, he's a very strong competitive battler, and um, he is a strong draft leaguer as well. And um, on the screen, you can see a snapshot of his team this season, of course, um, the Leaf Agents, as I mentioned. And so, yeah, very uh, intimidating-looking roster, a lot of power on this roster, um, top to bottom, so definitely going to be another challenging week for us, another uphill battle for us. So, um, but yeah, again, uh, we're just hoping to put the work in and do what we have to do to um, roll on here in the BHDL3, but definitely going to be another uh, good one to look forward to. So, um, but that's it for this one. Thanks for watching again, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy, and stay tuned for more new videos in the future. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.